welcome to or back to my channel. I'm Katie with Nai and I'm so grateful that you are here spending some time with me today. So today's topic we're going to be talking about recording, taking videos, taking photos and how to do it under a budget or completely free. Originally I started this channel to record my podcast that I was running back over during Covid and of course I didn't continue with the podcast but I did enjoy the filming, the editing and the whole process towards making and creating content. However, I am somebody who tries a lot of things and doesn't actually continue them. So I knew I wasn't going to spend a lot of money. What did I do? I went on a budget. And if you are someone who wants to start this and wants to do it all under a budget, then keep watching because I'm going to be giving you lots of different tips and tricks, but I'm also going to be doing it from the perspective of a pure beginner. So I'm going to be splitting this video into three different sections. Number one, the actual gear that I use. Number two, my process. And number three, the editing. Because I actually enjoy the editing more than anything. That's like one of my favorite things to do. It's actually because a bit of a running joke with my students they would see my TikToks on their for you page and they would say oh miss who takes these videos of you who takes these pictures of you and really and truly the gear that I use actually means that I don't have to bring somebody hiking with me or I don't have to bring somebody on these adventures with me because I have the gear that I have and it's very easy for me just to do it by myself But enough talking, let's get to the gear, let's get to the crux of the situation. What do I use to take the videos, to take the photos, to take everything? First up, I use my phone's camera. Now, obviously, there is that debacle, do I use a camera, do I use my phone? So I didn't want to go and spend a lot of money on a camera because a while back I did actually want, a few years back, I think I was in my second year of college, I wanted to be a photographer and I really wanted to take the photos. And I thought that the only way I could do that was to drop 500 euro on a camera. Since then, I realized that I never brought the camera with me anywhere, didn't know how to film videos on it, thought I was ridiculous, and totally got disheartened by the whole thing. So I ended up selling the camera for a fraction of the price, by the way, I was totally swindled. A liar, a scammer, I love robbery and fraud. This time around, I was not going to be doing that. I was not going to be buying a camera. I was going to just use what I have, which is my phone. Having said that, a lot of people will automatically turn off when they hear that, okay? They'll be like, oh, you use a phone, you're a cop out, whatever. To buy a camera that has actually the viewfinder that comes out, you're looking at at least 500 euro. It's not the money I have at the moment. Even with a full-time job, I wouldn't be able to just drop money like that. Now, if I do YouTube and TikTok and I am able to get a, an income from that, yes, I will spend on a camera, but I'm not going to do that now because my phone does the exact same thing. So there are a few rules that are like the golden rules that I've seen through all the TikToks and all the YouTube research that I've done. The first one being use your back camera at all times. Now I'm not using my back camera at the moment because I am very vain and need to see what I look like, but you need to use the back camera at all times because the back camera is so much better, so much clearer and so much crisper and you will get a better standard video or picture. The second thing is when you're doing videos, use 4K and 60 frames per second. Go into your settings, change your settings to 4K and 60 frames per second. And the final thing is with the phone, that is a, a golden rule, a golden, golden rule is to always do more B-roll than you think you need. And this is something, especially if you've watched last week's vlog, I learned the hard way because I didn't B-roll enough. Pretty much in the basic terms, there's this type of filming, which is me talking to the camera, you're looking at me, whatever. But there's also B-roll, which you're currently seeing now. It's putting something over me talking, so that way the viewer's not getting bored, I'm not getting bored watching it and editing back over it, or also to prove a point. So that's the B-roll. And definitely if you're using B-roll, be sure to record 20 times more than what you need, because you will find a need for it. And even if you use it for, repurpose it for a TikTok or something, that's absolutely fine too. The only issue I have with the phone though, as we all know, and I think the minute I'm gonna say it, it's gonna happen storage is such a massive issue like I buy the extra storage I do all the right things I clear off I delete everything and it still doesn't work it did happen by the way I was battling with storage for the last 24 hours next things next I use the tripods now tripods have been my god send it has been a game changer for me now before i even go into the prices of tripods where i got them etc etc i just want to let you know that you do not need a tripod you can literally just balance it up against something now of course be careful if you are using the phone's mic because if you balance it up against something you need to be very very careful that like it's not going to affect the sound or stuff like that but for b-roll and stuff you can either just prop it up against a stone prop it up against a bit of grass anything like that it is very manageable like obviously if you're sit in a house setting just use a few books you're fine but anyway
Okay, so first up we have my first tripod. Although it looks small, it is actually my favorite one because it is the strongest with those legs. As you can see with the other ones, it has an adjustable top hook to get the phone in and out. It's specifically for phones. You can also remove it so that way you can do landscape and portrait. And there's also the ball socket, which makes it very easy to get different angles on it. And it's very compact, and very easy to fit into my hike life bag. It was a gift for Christmas. It also came in a set with its own mic, but the mic wasn't great, so I don't use it. Next up we have my Movo set which was a gift from my mother at Christmas time and it came in this lovely little set with a bag, it came with the mic as you know, it came with a bar to put the mics and the lights on top of which is really really handy. The tripod itself is actually sturdy enough but I would prefer the other one. It came with a ball socket again, a removable stand, that way again it can be landscape or portrait. This tripod can also be used for cameras because of its diversity. It came in its own HD light, don't really like it, don't really use it came with a bunch of wires in there and also my mother for christmas got me two of the makeup lights and they're both brilliant they didn't come with the movo set but they were just brilliant either way i really really like them ones as you can see the mics can be plugged in so there's no charging needed the only thing that needs to be charged is the lights i would say for this one though it is much nicer to hold in a selfie position obviously the first tripod was the cheaper one but this one definitely was a bit more expensive and with the mic working obviously it's kind of obvious that, that one would be the more expensive one. Just a quick note here that if you are investing in a tripod, make sure you can get a set that has this bar because it's really handy. But also if you can see here where we have the little hole on the top of the holder for the phone, there's also a little hole there where you can actually stack the light on top of it without the bar and then stack the mic on the side of the light there. So it's really, really handy when you have to travel the light. It's really, really handy to have and finally my OG. This one was got on Amazon for maybe 30 euro. It has connections that can go both portrait and landscape and it can also work for a camera as well. It's a really versatile, dirty tripod. I really have brought this everywhere and tested its limits on everything. Only problem is if I bring it hiking and there's a bust of wind, it will fall. It has very long legs which can go to three different levels but stupidly, I only just realized this after having this tripod for two or three years, there's another way to make it even taller and you can and put it at your face height so for any times you've seen me in the past kind of squatting down to look at the tripod it's because i didn't know it goes up higher which i feel so stupid for doing so I have three sets of mics. The first mic is the one I'm currently using right now, which is the big overhead one that can be stuck into the phone. Again, they are slightly cheaper, so sound has always been my issue with my vlogs, as you probably know if you're a long time follower of my vlogs, but I'm currently, it's a work in progress. I'm currently uh, educating myself in the best way possible, but the Movo mics are currently the one I'm, is the current one I'm using now. I also have the little clip-on ones that you know about now. The clip-on ones were a TikTok box, can be very hit or miss. So I wanted to show in really quickly that I used, the idea was to use these mics throughout the whole vlogging experience, but as you can see further on in the videos, a lot of the times I would use them and realize afterwards, oh no, the sound didn't pick up or the sound was too intense or it just didn't come through. So it was very much hit or miss. So I didn't want a chance that when we were out on the ground in the moment, so I didn't use I will say that can be very, very hit or miss at times, but I do find them very helpful for when it comes to voiceovers and things like that. They're very easy to just pop in the connector into the phone, talk into the mic as a video and you're fine. So they're grand, they're fine. The only problem is there when you have them up against your clothes and they make that little shuffly noise. Finally, I have my actual mic recording kit, which I used when I was creating the podcast. I actually bought two sets of mics for, I think, 400 euro. They have the whole shebang. They're grand. I use Audacity when I use them, which is a free program. Very helpful, very cool to use if you wanted to use it. Yeah, those mics are great, but I just find them really big and bulky. I don't go reaching for them. To be honest, the smaller the better with the, he the mics for me. Obviously, like I said, it's a work in progress for me. I don't really have everything in terms of education for mics and for sound, but I'm getting there slowly and we're, we're progressing. I think the problem with me is I don't bring the mics when I'm out and about and it definitely makes a problem when it comes to recording. Like as you probably heard with the Florence videos, I had to turn the volume up really, really loud in editing or I just kind of had to sacrifice it. Um, yeah, like just like uh, Bella, Bella. And you're like, um, thank you, sir. And for any I of you who are like, <laughs> for any of you who are like, where's your microphones? Her sound is so bad. Oh, where? They're in the hotel room. 
And finally, like I said before, the tripods and the mics are not really needed at the start. Obviously, if you want to create fantastic quality from day one, that's fine. Okay, so my process, obviously today I'm gonna to be doing this in the, because the weather is terrible outside. I'm gonna be doing this in terms of my own room. You're gonna be able to see how we get on. First things first, you set up the tripod, you make sure that you are in position. I would always try and do a tester video if possible before you do anything, just so you know you're gonna be in shot or you're not gonna be what angles look good or whatever. A huge, huge tip I have for you, ladies and gents, if you, which I am so stupid, I didn't know at all you could do this. Now, if you have a camera, pretty sure Sony and Canon also have a similar thing in terms of an app and you can use your phone, but if you have, an Apple Watch. You can go into the settings in the Apple Watch and you can actually turn on your camera. Now I think this is more for photography and not for videography, but still if someone wants to use it, it might help you. And you can actually look at your watch to see the angle that you're in once you set up your phone. And it really does help you because you can see what your angles are like, you can see what suits you. And if you need to move, if you don't. <laughs> Once I have the tripod set up and I know that my angles are going to be good, I just go and do some movements. So for most of the things when it comes to being outdoors with Albert, I tend to just go walking up and down. Also a lot of the times I do a few running shots and that way I can get some nice in action photos. I'm not a fan of posy photos. I'll do my movements while I'm making the video and then I will go and review it at the editing table later. So after the video is taken, I always check in the moment as well to make sure that there are some salvageable <laughs> poses that I can screenshot and say if there are that's fine we'll continue on and if not the golden rule is do not delete anything until you are at the editing table because what I have found is in the moments my intrusive thoughts will get to me and say that's ugly delete it but really when I look at the editing table and I'm like oh but that was actually really nice now however there have been times where I have done the exact opposite and thought I've taken a really nice picture looked at it for a while and I'm like ugh Either way, it's a really easy process to do. You just press play, run, come back. So as you can see, I have got into my office space. <gasps> I've got my mics. As you can see, I've gotten into my office space for the editing. And editing can be a really fun process for me. I just, after I film, I put everything on my laptop. I take off my makeup. I sit down. Shout out to Maria for buying these monstrosities of flasks um, for all of us. She bought one for me, Thomas, and herself. But anyway, I sit here for a while, I go through the process, I go through what I have, and I add in my intros, I add in my outros, so that way I can kind of plan it out. I also add my music in this section as well. I will have to be going through all the clips in a second, and we're looking at around 45 minutes of footage at the moment, and I will be cutting it down to possibly 15, hopefully 15 minutes. That's usually where I like to stop my videos at. I love having a video with music because it also adds in, especially if there's like a boring, not a boring part, but visually it's quite boring because I'm just standing talking to you. It helps. So the program that I use, although I am not sponsored by them, I would love to be, is Artless. Artless is a 15 euro a month subscription fee that gives you free copyrighted music you can use and you won't get copyright claimed. You can also now, they have now this new thing where you can get footage and drone footage which is really really cool it kind of gives another element to the video and of course the songs are really good as well there are other subscription services but Artless was the first one i found and to be honest i kind of just stuck with them because they were the easiest and even if i cancel my subscription all the songs i had downloaded will be safe from what i gather now to do probably six or seven hours of editing editing katie here it was nine but i got it down to 15 minutes though you can thank me later. A tip I always have for editing is to make sure that you edit it and walk away and don't upload it straight away. Leave it for a day. I didn't listen to that advice today either. I did it straight through. And sometimes that works. Most of the time it doesn't for me though. <laughs> time to edit. Nine hours later.
after. But there you have it guys. That is the process I do as I make my TikToks and as I make my YouTube. Now like I said, I am no professional. The views on my TikToks and the views on my YouTube are nothing to write home about at the moment. But like the experts say, keep going, 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 going until you don't love to do it anymore. And I'm definitely enjoying this process. If you are someone who enjoys doing it, be sure to invest in some of these products or to even get the information on TikTok. Don't live in regret. Don't say, I wish I had done that. Go and do it right now. If this has been helpful. Leave a comment down below. It's a different kind of video for me, but it's a question that I get a lot. So enjoy. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Remember, best foot forward and always land on your feet. Goodbye.